without being too trite about it, I think our audience wants everything from us, you know. They want, and if they don't get it from us, they will go somewhere else to get it. Now that doesn't mean you have to, you know, drop your pants or anything like that, because I think that the readers that come to our products and our digital sites are wanting a Fairfax benchmark of quality, independent, fair and balanced journalism. And I'm really passionate about that because I think that with all of the competitive strains and the massive landscape of information there is out there, that this, these are the qualities that set us apart. These are, this is our competitive advantage, is our adherence to those tenets. It doesn't mean we can't tell popular stories. It doesn't mean we can't be tub-thumping investigative journalists in text, in images and in graphics. But what it does mean is that it has a, a benchmark of quality assurance towards all that we do. Well, let me tell you a little bit about the tablet first. So our tablet started in May 2011 and it started, uh, the concept was that it would be a commuting platform. Uh, it would be something that people would use on the train to and from work and that it would be a reflective platform. So that it would be deeper journalism, it would be longer form journalism. Uh, and already, so we're now 2014, and already that concept, that original concept has gone out the window because technology has, has moved forward so quickly that it's no longer a commuting platform uh, because the mobile phone has taken over from the tablet as a commuting platform and the tablet is a home uh, platform. And there are now 7 million tablets in Australia in 2011. There wouldn't have been anything near that number and they reckon that the market can grow by another 5 million. And people primarily use the tablet between the hours of 7 a.m. and 9 a.m and after 6 p.m. at night, and they do it whilst watching television, and they do it multitasking. And it, just in the brief history of the tablet, you already can see how a, a, a vehicle for distributing news transforms uh, it unexpectedly. And that's why we need to innovate, because things are constantly transforming before our eyes, and nobody really knows where the next step is. The consumer will always be in control um, and the consumer will, I don't want to say the word king, the consumer will always be the person who uh, we're delivering this to. So the evolution of technology will allow them greater options. Uh, they are now recognising uh, that they don't have to be restricted to what we now serve them. They can choose what they read, what they engage with, how they engage with it, what they'll share, what they deem to be important. The headline or the front page won't be so important for them anymore. Actually, I went on this panel um, for Al Jazeera and I was so impressed and I think more people should be doing it. So people could, could send in um, comments as I was talking. I was on a panel. It was only a 15 minute show. They got three people from around the world to call in via Skype, talk about the issue of the day. And then once they talked about the issue, they, people were open up to social media to ask questions. It was quick, sharp, entertaining, interesting, and over in 15 minutes. So I just think more people need to be doing stuff like that. And it was easy. I just dialed in at Skype and I was already talking to people in Washington and people, you know, Melbourne, in like, you know, Abu Dhabi, yeah, Dubai. And, I think the challenge for newspapers and, and news organisations is to respond to what it is that people want, but also to recognise that because of the sheer volume, the sheer plethora of media now, there's not just a news cycle, there's an opinion cycle. So going to your question, what are people asking for? In many cases, people are asking to be told what they already think. People are choosing the media that they believe reinforces their views and I think for a, 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 a an organization like Fairfax Media which has always been neutral and and uh, observed sound journalistic principles our our task is to be giving them both that is to be um, covering the news in such a way that uh, is faithful to the facts uh, providing them with proper analysis and critique of what's going on and where possible uh, challenging them uh, to, to see things differently you cannot be a journo 
particularly in this day and age, without being curious about the world around you and wanting to know why things work the way they do. You should be the sort of person or the kid who pulled the radio apart because you wanted to see where all the wires went. You, you should be just fascinated and almost to the point of obsessive with how the wheels of power turn, how those Machiavellian deals are done, why the laws that come into place have been made. Not because someone's just sat there and said, wouldn't it be nice to have a law around this? Because it's driven by 20 different factors. And you need to be prepared to go and dig for that. And then you need to be prepared to come out of it and tell us a story and explain that. And that is, you know, journos undersell their ability to take complex ideas and then present them in a mass way so that you can get people to understand what's at play. Sometimes if we've overlooked something or missed out a piece of information or haven't provided you know, the visuals that people expected there to be or a link that people need, you know, that's great because they'll provide us with the feedback and we can then um, you know, change the story straight away and um, reply to them and also keep that in mind in the future when we're doing something similar. The challenge of uh, journalists is that they are in the business of um, using their own uh, judgment to decide what's important, what's not important, what goes into the story, what doesn't, right? And that's a very internal activity. Um, and some people might look at that and say, effectively, that's kind of arrogant because I'm deciding as a journalist what you as the audience member uh, needs to know. Right? Um, I don't think that's arrogant, but it is clearly what a good journalist has to do. And then if you, we sort of go back to the idea that the, the wellspring, the foundation of innovation is this um, very dispassionate, um, open and honest observation of what a user wants and needs and has to wrestle with, right? That's the reverse of that content creation activity and mindset uh, because you park your judgment right? and you say, all I'm interested in is what is going on. All I'm interested in is what the audience member's motivation is, and I will not make any judgments as to whether I think that uh, reasoning or that activity is superficial or meaningful, whether it's um, cutting to the heart of the matter or somehow peripheral to it. I will set aside all that judgment and just observe and try to really understand what are the pain points, what are the irritations um, in, that that person is experiencing. Right. So it's, it's a huge challenge, not just for journalists, but for any uh, creator. There are many people out there trying to influence what we put on our websites and all the rest of it. They will go to extraordinary lengths now and with terrific sophistication to push their messages across. And that is <clears throat> not so much a threat to journalism, but something we must always be aware of, that behind the story, there is sometimes another story and we should never forget that our job is to always seek the truth and find out as much as we, um, as we can about it. And I have a little phrase that I use myself sometimes which, which is that with a lot of these people um, you should just remember that to honour those who seek the truth but beware of those who say they've found it. Business coverage has traditionally been very traditional, uh, here's a company report, Here's an opinion piece in a company report, et cetera, et cetera. So what we want to do is actually break that information up into smaller pieces, um, particularly for people who are on the go or on their mobile. So you don't need 500 words telling you that Fairfax Media has made or not made any money in a year. Um, what you may need is just a par. That's it. You're on the go.